Who's this? Brett. Brett. Oh. How's it going? I saw Brett just bike by, and he's like, "Oh man, That's good, too funny. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, you as well. I'm just out here stretching in Cheeseman Park. Rocking the shoes that you, you recommended. There. You, what are those now? The are beacons. those the Beacons? Yeah. Nice. So I see your uh, Pikes Peak shirt on That's there. Right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm just rolling my foot out. Brett's biking by. I see your name on uh, Strava. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, who is this guy? There, here he is in the flesh. Oh yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I'm a big fan of Demore Global Running. So. Dude, thanks, man. Are you racing this year? And here we go. All right, running shoes out the door from the giveaway on what was that Monday night? Took me a couple extra days to get them all wrapped up, but we got it done. And now I'm here in Cheeseman Park, and shout out to Brett, thanks for stopping by and saying hello as I was getting my shoes on, that's amazing. That's what it's all about. Meeting on, meeting on Strava and then crossing over to the real world, so that was so cool. He was just biking by here in Cheeseman. And uh, all right, we are getting you the full review today of the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknits. Uh, I currently have 40 miles in the shoes, so that gives you a hint as to how far I'm going today. At least 10, no more than 12. We'll see how the legs feel after a big week. And uh, yeah, I just did a little a little cruise uh, through the park and they're feeling pretty darn good. So, all right, full review coming right up. Let's go downtown. <music> Okay, about halfway through the run, I always like to carry my phone on my full review uh, day runs because what I do is I take notes as I'm going. So like today, I've already got written down uh, ground feel, bounciness, uh, underfoot feel, uh, forefoot, talking about the forefoot and of course the fit. So anyway, just taking notes as I go, listening to my feet as we move along. are back in the studio for the full review of the Nike Zoomfly Flyknit. This shoe was released actually last fall, September 2018, and you're probably wondering what this tape is doing on the shoe. I'll explain that in a minute. Keyword, react. That's right, because we're reacting to this midsole, to the upper, to the entire shoe, but especially this react foam through the midsole. Okay, the more I run in different shoes, and holy smokes, I almost forgot, what a week it has been here on this channel. We did the full review of the Carbon Rocket after, gosh, I think this was about 60 miles. And this guy, the Audios 4, was 99 miles. So if you haven't seen these two reviews, go check them out, upper right hand corner. But now, after today, we now have 51, 52 miles in the Nike Zoom Fly flying it. And that is my baseline. I always put 50 miles into a shoe. And okay, why the tape? Basically, I am trying, trying to cancel out any outside factors. For example, I, uh, <laughs> side story, I used to root for John Stockton and Carl Malone, two basketball players from the 90s who played for the Utah Jazz. And why did I cheer for them? Because they always got beat by Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Basically, I always tried to root for the underdog. Well, in the running shoe world, Nike is not the underdog. Nike is the king when it comes to resources. I would just love to go tour their facilities to see all of the technology they are putting into their shoes, all of the, all of the design work. And so for me, as I'm reviewing running shoes for you moving forward, I'm trying to block out the fact that this shoe has a Nike swoosh on the side of it. Who cares? 
Who cares? Just like the three stripes of Adidas or what the little bird on Hoka, whatever they have, it's like all I care about is performance, all right? And so anyway, that is my little rant for today. I'm trying to block out the marketing, the advertising, the history of the shoe, of the company. I'm trying to focus strictly on performance. And let's move on to some specs. All right, here we go. 33 millimeter stack height in the heel. 33, that's actually my favorite number. Little uh, little trivia for the day. 33 in the heel, 23 in the forefoot, which means a 10 millimeter drop. And uh, I'll just say, no ground contact feel in this shoe. If you are a runner that loves ground contact feel, this shoe is probably not for you. Uh, all right, moving on to the weight. In my size, it's coming in at basically 7.5 ounces or 213 grams. So fairly lightweight, but not the lightest shoe out there. I think, I think size nine is about eight ounces in men's. And moving on to the upper, it's that classic Nike fly knit upper. Uh, it's like fusible, they call it like fusible yarns that are, that are, that are woven together. And uh, so far so good. I'm feeling some pretty good breathability, but I will say a little quote unquote sloppy, meaning my foot does not feel as locked down. Definitely, definitely a different feel than the Carbon Rocket or the Audios 4. That lack of lockdown is not bothering me too much, but it is present. Like it's, if you're, a, once again, if you love a nice solid lockdown feel, this shoe is probably not for you. And moving on to the midsole, so it has the carbon fiber plate through the midsole, the exact same carbon fiber plate that is in these Vaporfly 4%. And uh, so I will say that, okay, I'll just mention this right now. Basically, I looked at my watch today. I thought I was about seven minute pace. I was at like 620 pace. So I was going a little too fast and uh, I needed to back off the gas a little bit. Who knows? I think the combination of the, the carbon fiber plate and the React foam was helping me along today. That is for sure through the midsole. So, and in addition for the midsole, durability on point. I've only put 50 miles, but I can already tell the density of the React foam is gonna be solid. Like if you're a heavier set runner, uh, I think I would go with the Zoom Fly over the Vapor Fly for sure. You're gonna get way more volume of miles out of the Zoom Fly over the Vapor Fly 4%. And through the outsole, real quick, you've got the exposed React foam through the midfoot, right where the plantar fascia is at through the midfoot. And then the harder black rubber on the forefoot where you're landing. Or if you're a heel striker, it also has some black rubber in the heel area. And I will say, it's not quite as grippy as, and I know I'm, it's not as grippy as the Continental Rubber on this Audios 4. Like I can feel, I felt a difference today between this guy and this guy, this guy with respect to the grip on the road. I think Nike could put a little more um, outsole pattern, especially through the forefoot for just a little more grip, just a smidge. I'm, I, I did notice today it wasn't quite giving me what I wanted when I, so I did four strides after my 10 miles today. I did four strides at like 450 pace and I was digging, digging, and I was like, yeah, I want a little more. I just want a little more Nike. So I think this mid, I think this forefoot could get a little bit different uh, pattern. And a couple positives of the Zoom Fly, it's fast, it's pretty darn fast. As I already mentioned, I looked at my watch today and I was like, oh boy, going 620s, I need to back off the gas a little bit. So it is fast. I, again, I think that combo of the drop and uh, the carbon fiber plate inside is helping me go faster. Also, I used this shoe last week, why? because my legs were tired and I wanted a little help. I know, like volume is pretty high for me right now. I'm flirting with 90 miles a week. And so yeah, my legs are feeling it. So last week I said, okay, I need a little help. What shoe is gonna give me some help to get through this? I think it was, yeah, it was a 15 mile run. I chose this guy and sure enough, I felt like the 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 the, the stack height, the, the yeah, just like that. Look at that stack height. Like it just helps you get through a run when your legs are tired, absorbing some of that impact and pounding. And then a couple drawbacks about the Zoom Fly. It did feel a little unstable today and I feel very confident in my hand-eye coordination and I've rolled my ankle maybe four or five times in my entire 20 year, 20 years of running, like really bad. So I have, I have rolled my ankle and if you are prone to rolling ankles, 
I would stay away from this. You could really roll your ankle pretty good in this guy. So, but I'm not, I, at this point in my running career with my ankle strength, I feel pretty confident that uh, I'm not going to roll my ankle in the shoes, but it is a little, you're pretty high off the ground. Uh, and then also, my feet are feeling, I don't know what to say, they're feeling a little, a little tired, a little, I don't want to say beat up, but just a little, I feel my feet, and I think, again, I think it's that carbon fiber plate through this shoe. Like, I would love to run in this, the Zoom Fly without the carbon fiber plate, just to see how it feels, because my feet... I think they are feeling a little bit of that flex in that plate inside the midsole. So anyway, those are a couple drawbacks. Nothing like earth shattering. It's not a deal breaker for me, but just things to be aware of if you're considering this shoe. And moving on to a score for the Zoom Fly, 8 out of 10, not bad. I am pleased. I'm really pleased. And the price point right now. Go to Nike.com. Don't go to Amazon. Don't go to Backcountry. Don't go to Running Warehouse. Go to Nike.com. I am seeing this shoe for $111 right now. So that is a pretty, I would say, I would pay $111 in a heartbeat. That is a good price, in my opinion, for this shoe. So in conclusion, for the Nike, Zoom Fly, Fly Knit. Man, I, again, 8 out of 10. That's a pretty good score for me. And if you're thinking about racing this spring, this summer, and you're not necessarily chasing down PRs, or maybe you're a runner that is simply going out to race to have fun, enjoy the day, this shoe could be for you. And I would put it in the 10K to half marathon category, right around there. Could you wear it for a marathon? You could. Uh, I think there's better options as far as the weight goes in this guy. I think there's better options out there for you. And I almost forgot to mention the fit for the shoe. I went true to size and it's doing great. I will say through the forefoot, like the fly knit really is hugging the top of your foot. So if you don't like, if you like a little more splay in your toes, you may want to think about something else because I'm not getting much flexibility through my toes or if you have a really wide forefoot, this is probably not for you. Um, even though the fly knit is fairly flexible, just keep that in mind. Like it's not a really wide toe box in my opinion. Yeah. So I hope that helped. If you learned something or enjoyed that review, maybe you could share this vlog with some of your running buddies out there. And again, that keyword is react. And the question of the day, oh, it's an important one. It's an important one. Time to vote, everybody. Get your, get your fingers ready. Okay. Down in the comments. These are five options. Here's what's going down on this YouTube channel. Basically, I continue to get a ton of questions about comparing running shoes, okay? And doing what I'm going to call running shoe battles, okay? So we're going to do some running shoe battles maybe next week. That is the goal, but I need your vote. You ready for this? Question of the day. Putting it to a vote. What will be, what should be the first running shoe battle video you make the call with your votes down below. Okay, five options. Okay, so down below, all you need to do is type A, B, C, D, or E. All right, so here are the options. Option A, Nike Zoom Fly Fly Knit versus the Nike Vapor Fly 4% Fly Knit. Option B, Nike Zoom Fly Fly Knit versus the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. Option C, the Adidas Adios 4 versus the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knit. Option D, the Adidas Audios 4 versus the Hoka Carbon Rocket. All right. And option E, the Adidas Audios 4 versus the Skechers Razor 3. So those are your options. A, B, C, D, or E down in the comments. Let me know your vote and we will see what comes out as the most popular based on your votes down below. And then the goal is next week to film the first running shoe battle for this channel. Does that sound good? Okay, before signing off, I know I promised that I would open up this. Hold on. So yesterday I promised that I would open this box today. I'm not going to do it in this vlog. This vlog is getting too long. So come back 5 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to bump. I usually publish the second video of the day at 3 p.m. Instead, I'm going to bump it to 5 p.m. Okay, so the daily vlog publishes at 5 a.m. every single day, 
And if there is a second video on that given day, I decided we're just going to go 12 hours later. So 5 p.m. All right. So 5 a.m. in the morning, 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And I will open up this box for you, a running shoe company that I've never, ever uh, even held in my hands before. So that'll be the second video publishing today. Come back for that again, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Seek beauty, work hard, <laughs> and love each other. Woo, what a day. I hope you enjoyed that. See you tomorrow.